Hi there and welcome back. This continues our exploration of PL SQL in Chapter 7 of the Advanced SQL course. In the last video we've been talking about the possibility to embed SQL queries inside your SQL UDFs to evaluate these queries and then return or then assign the returned row to a PL SQL variable. So you were interested in the result that that embedded SQL query did compute. There may be other situations where you would be interested in executing SQL statements, DML statements, for example, but you are not interested in the actual value that is being returned. You are only interested on the effect of the database system on the underlying tables, for example. And that's possible too. So if you're only after the side effects of a SQL statement, then there is syntactic possibilities in PL SQL to do just that. There's actually one particular statement in PL SQL that does nothing and does not have any side effects at all. It's a sort of uh, placeholder statement null, just written null as a statement inside your PL SQL scripts will just do nothing, have no side effects, and well, can act as a placeholder for a larger piece of code that you would uh, later have in its place. All right, but other SQL uh, statements that are only interesting because of, uh, uh, of their uh, side effects would be, well, the DML statements, insert, delete, update. These make for valid PL SQL statements that you can embed in the normal flow of your SQL UDFs. They will be executed, all the side effects on the database will happen, and they will have no particular value, nothing that you can assign to a variable, unless you're using the returning clause, the optional returning clause to these DML statements, which gives you the possibility to return values, rows, based on rows that have been inserted, deleted, or indeed updated. Such statements will have a value, and you are able to receive these values and assign them to PL SQL variables. All right. Uh, another uh, possibility to just embed a query and just evaluate it for its side effects would be the perform keyword. This is a somewhat peculiar choice of syntax. So where you would have a normal select query that of course starts with a select keyword here as we are used to. Well, we could embed this particular query into our PL SQL UDF, but we would replace the select keyword by this new perform keyword. All right, so perform from where, uh, group by having and so on, that would be the syntax of this particular query. It would be executed, any functions, for example, that would be ev evaluated while this query is executed would be invoked. Maybe these functions have side effects and these side effects will hit the database, but otherwise, uh, all of the returning values, all of the returned rows are being discarded and no assignment to variables will happen. Okay, so that would be different possibilities to just perform side effects in this, well, statement-based imperative style of programming. All right, so uh, let's, let's talk about uh, one particular keyword that comes actually in two flavors uh, in PLS SQL. And that makes for a really interesting distinction between the SQL UDFs that we can write. I would like to distinguish UDFs that return non-tabular results from those that return tabular results. So uh, let's talk about the non-tabular uh, SQL UDFs first. You can, uh, you can identify them by looking at the returns clause and the type that is mentioned after the returns clause is actually a cell type, something that can be held inside the single cell of a table, maybe a scalar value, uh, value maybe an array, maybe a geometric object, uh, maybe a row type. All of this would make this uh, particular function a non-table function, okay, that returns a single cell value. To define what cell value is being returned from such a function, there is the special return keyword that you probably know from most statement-based imperative programming languages. So we would evaluate E 
we would cast it to the return type tau of our function, okay? And that would then be the cell value, the single value that re defines the result of our non-table function, okay? Well, there is particular functions, well, probably they should be called procedures by that point, that return a particular type of void, returns void. Okay, so these functions are not expected to return any value. So, well, yeah, they might rather act like procedures in other programming languages. And uh, in such cases, you can just use the return keyword without any uh, expression there. So the function would return when it hits the return keyword, it would also return automatically if it reaches uh, reaches the final statement if the control state if the control flow hits the last statement in the top level block then that particular function would also return without any particular value all right and when of course once this happens either with a value being returned or with no value being returned execution resumes in the calling function or maybe in the calling query the query that invoked our udf so, so nothing of particular importance uh, or pecu peculiarity here. All right. Uh, if you would like to return multiple values in a non-tabular function, okay, then, uh, well, it would make sense to declare the return type tau here as a row type, which can have many fields. And, uh, well, the n fields of this particular row type could be used to return n values from your non-tabular function. All right, so that would be the non-table function case. There is also the possibility to define table functions, set returning functions with uh, PL SQL, and I think that's super interesting. So how you how you can uh, tell these apart from the uh, first type is by looking at the returns clause again, and what you will see is that uh, there is this modifier set of here. Okay, so this indicates that this function will indeed return a set or it's indeed a bag. It's indeed a bag of values of type tau. If tau is a row type, what you will return is a bag of rows. Well, and that's just a table, right? You could also return a bag of integers, so of some single uh, cell values here, and we will see uh, examples of uh, such uh, such functions uh, in a few minutes when we switch over to the terminal again all right so how would you how would you return an entire table from these functions if all of the expressions that we can deal with are only of cell type so they are scalars or rows or arrays well the answer lies in the return clause there is two particular return clauses that you will only encounter in table functions or set returning functions. It's the return next E clause and the return query Q clause. Okay, in return next E, the value of E, the value of expression E will be evaluated and appended to a table that is later on returned as the entire result of your set returning function. So what the function will do is it will add rows, add single rows, add single values these values to a table that is being accumulated in the background once the function is ready to return once the function is really uh, done with the uh, creation of that result table it will just use a plain return without any uh, next modifier or without any query modifier all right so we would probably have many invocations of the return next e statement in our set returning udfs all of these e's will be added to the accumulated table in the background uh, and only one evaluation of the return uh, keyword without a next uh, the accumulated table will be passed as the result to the caller of the function all right, this also implies that return next E indeed does not affect the control flow of our UDF. After return next E has done its thing and added the value of E to the accumulated table, well, we would just pass control to the next statement in our UDF, which would be just some statement S here. So control would fall through. All right. Maybe take some time to get used to the fact that return next 
does not really return from the function. It just adds to the query result table that is being built. The return query acts the same way. It does not return from the UDF, from the set returning UDF. It will evaluate SQL query Q, add all the rows returned by Q to the accumulated table, and then just proceed to execute statement S. So again, no returning from the set returning UDF here at this particular point. We will only return with a plain return without the next and query modifiers. All right. So indeed, this is a way around uh, the fact that we can only deal with cell values here or single row values and still be able to accumulate an entire table of results. Please note that you can freely mix the return next and the return query in such a set returning function. E will always return and add a single row to the accumulated table. Return query here will add the entire result of query Q to the accumulated table. Of course, the schema, the types of Q and E have to be compatible to make this work. All right, I think that's a quite an interesting setup. Let's switch over to the terminal and see how that works in practice. All right. So what I've brought here is my own homebrew version of Generate Series. Well, a simple variant of that. It's the PLSQL UDF from two that will enumerate the values between the from and the two argument integer values that I am passing. So what I will be returning is a set of integer, a single column table, a single column table that will carry integer values in the individual cells. And of course, it will be the integer values between F and T inclusive. As you will see in a few seconds, this function is clever enough to have uh, the opportunity, the possibility to count down from F down to T if T is smaller than F. All right, so let's see how that would be implemented. Okay, so we enter the main block of the function here and what you will see is that I'm using the loop construct. We haven't talked about loop yet. That will be the content of the upcoming video. But I think you can uh, imagine that this would be just simple iterated control flow. So we would evaluate all the statements in this particular function. Once we read end loop, we will start at the beginning again. So that would be an, an endless loop, actually, that we can express in PL SQL. So uh, what do we do? Well, we want to construct a table of integers, and that would be the first integer that we add to the table, the from value. All right, so no, no um, change of control flow here. We would just add the current f integer value to the accumulated table, which will be empty in the beginning. Now it will contain the first f value, right? Uh, well, uh, if f has already reached t, well, if we have reached the end of our series that we are to uh, generate, then it's time to indeed return from the set returning function. So implicitly, the entire accumulated rows that have been collected so far will be returned as the set valued or table valued result of this function. Otherwise, it's time to maintain f. We will update f uh, by adding the sign of t minus f. So, uh, well, this could be one or minus one, just depending on the fact that t is larger or smaller than f. Well, if f and t are equal, then, uh, well, that uh, generated table will only contain a single value. But uh, otherwise, we will maintain f, increase or decrease f, and then start our loop again. This would be the next value to emit into the output table. Maybe we are done at this point, maybe not, and the loop will continue. So that would be our replacement for generate series. Well, a simple variant of that. So let's define that function. All right, and then invoke it uh, like this. And indeed, we find the expected result. A table is being returned, a single column table that carries all the values 1 to 10. I think we should be able to uh, do this also 
and uh, well yeah can also count down here all right right so these are set returning functions expressed in PO SQL. I brought a different example with me an example in which you can see that uh, the same UDF can contain invocations of return query and return next this would be the rows or default function which will uh, work over the playground table t again all right so uh, what we will uh, do in this function is receive a particular d value a d column value of our t table and then uh, as you can see here in the very first statement of our PL SQL udf well we would query all the rows of the t table and select those that match the d argument of our udf those would be returned so what we return here are indeed sets or bags of t rows and this is exactly what you find here in the return type it's a set of that will be returned a set of rows and of course t is the row type of the t table this is exactly what we are returning here since we are ret using return query all all of the rows that are being reported or that are being uh, generated here will be added to the accumulated table if indeed no such row has been found if uh, well if there is no such d value it's our inside our t table well then the uh, not found indicator variable would be set all right and uh, this enables us to generate a replacement or a default row that would be uh, added to the accumulated table instead so we want to make sure that we at least return one row from our rows or default function okay so in the case that there is no row being found we will just manufacture a row so uh, we will just query the t table for the maximum a value here all right and as you can see i'm using the convention to compute a scalar result in uh, scalar subquery in parentheses here and assign that to this scalar PO SQL variable all right so we will find the maximum a value and given that we would just manufacture we would just craft one row here is the one row that we would craft it has the same schema uh, schema that is compatible with the playground table t all right so it would have an a value well we would uh, we would uh, return a plus one so we would generate the next larger a value in a sense and all of the other fields would be set to null appropriately typed because the well this is a crafted a manufactured row that for which we don't know the b c and d column entry values all right uh, to just uh, alert the user that such default row generation has happened let's have a debugging statement here all right so that would be a mixture of return next and return query and as we will later see in this chapter uh, we can easily build a udf in which some of the rows are being contributed by next some of the rows are being contributed by query before we contribute more rows by next and so on so all of these return query and next statements can be freely mixed to add to the accumulated table returned by our set returning function so let's define the function here and then call it well we would call uh, rows or default with the value 30 with d value 30 there should be at least one such row in uh, in our playground table and all of the, these rows would be returned oh, indeed there's one such row all right d30 okay uh, and we could uh, invoke the function again with d value 42 there is no d value 42 in the playground table there should be but there isn't and uh, in that case we would craft a row indeed so that would be the next larger a value probably the uh, a value the maximum a value in t is five currently and bcd values that have been set to zero so that would be the definition of set returning PO SQL udfs which we of course will put to good measure once we reach the end of this chapter seven where we will discuss a really interesting major application usage example for PS SQL. but uh, until then Take care and uh, see you around. Bye-bye.